PFL Superfights Battle of the Giants featuring the reigning PFL heavyweight tournament champion Hainan Fajeda taking on the former UFC heavyweight champ Francis Ngannou took place on October 19th at the Maya Dean in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. The event brought in millions at the gate and even more in pay-per-view revenue, sponsorships, and merchandise sales. But how big of a cut did the fighters take home? International commissions typically do not disclose fighter pay information, so the purses I'll be showing in this video are just projections based on previously disclosed closed earnings. With that said, let's jump into the first fight. Every fighter that's under contract, if you want to tell the media what you're paid, that's up to you. Kicking off the main card, former Bellator featherweight champion AJ McKee attempted to take the fight to the ground against the up-and-coming Paul Hughes. Hughes' takedown defense held strong for the most part, and he scored a knockdown off a right hand at the end of the first round. The fight was closely contested, but Hughes started to pick up momentum towards the end, finding a home for his strikes and finishing strong. At the end of three rounds, the result was a split decision victory for Paul Big News Hughes. Before we get into the numbers, I want to be very clear that I haven't done nearly as much digging into Bellator and PFL pay structures as I have for the UFC. I did my best to present the most accurate information possible, and I'll be citing sources along the way, but everything you're about to see will be estimates and best guesses. Starting with McKee, we know he made $100,000 guaranteed at Bellator 286 two years ago and signed a new deal with the promotion last year. So for this event, he likely made between $100,000 and $150,000 guaranteed. In contrast, contrast to the UFC, Bellator and PFL allow fighters to have their own sponsors, which can be extremely lucrative. At Bellator 192, Rory McDonald was paid $250,000 in sponsorship alone by the cryptocurrency company Dash. Darren Till revealed on the Ben Heath podcast that he had to turn down a $150,000 sponsorship offer due to the UFC's policy. While those might be outliers, several fighters have shared the details of their sponsorship deals worth tens of thousands of dollars. With McKee being a former champion, I wouldn't be surprised if he's able to pull upwards of $100,000 in sponsorship pay. That puts him in the neighborhood of $125,000 to $250,000. And because I like nice round numbers, I'll distill all the ranges down to an average, coming out to $187,500. As for the winner Paul Hughes, I took the purses from the past five Bellator events that took place in Georgia and California, two states that still disclose fighter pay, and averaged them out based on the number of bouts each fighter had with the promotion. This was Hughes' second fight, so if I include a bump for being a former Cage Warriors champion, it comes out to an average of $15,000 to $30,000 to show, and another $15,000 to $30,000 for the win. Now Hughes' name carries some buzz right now, so it could be towards the upper end of that range. He likely wouldn't be pulling the type of sponsorship that he does, but former Bellator lightweight Miles Jury does a good breakdown of more realistic sponsorship deals on his YouTube channel, where he explains that he was paid $8,500 for his fight against Benson Henderson back in 2019. Considering that this card is one of the biggest in PFL history, and Jury's breakdown was nearly 5 years ago, I'd bet Hughes was able to pull at least that much, if not more. Which is why I'm estimating another ten dollars to $25,000 in sponsorship. That puts us somewhere in the range of forty dollars to $85,000, or averaged out $62,500. In the second fight, Hussein Katamagomayev came in as a minus 1200 favorite against Zafar Mosin, but was virtually unable to impose his wrestling attack. That meant that Mosin was able to use his judo throws to take the fight to the ground, and his striking looked sharper when they were on the feet, including likely the biggest shot of the fight, a huge right hook in the third round. Hussein faded as the fight came to a close, and Zafar Mosin walked away with a unanimous decision victory. Just like in Bellator, PFL fighters on their second fight with the promotion fall in the five to $15,000 purse range. Assuming Katamago Maev pulls between five dollars and $15,000 in sponsorship, that gives him between ten dollars and $30,000, or $20,000 on the night. While Mosin, also on his second fight, earned five dollars to $15,000 to show and a matching amount for the win, as well as his sponsorship pay, for a total of fifteen dollars to $45,000, or an average of $30,000. The third fight saw Fabian Edwards challenge the champion Johnny Eblen for the Bellator middleweight belt. The striking exchanges were close, and Edwards was able to catch Eblen with several counters in the early rounds, but Eblen used his wrestling to control the pace and was up on the scorecards going into the final frame. Despite an eye poke and a low kick in the first minute, Edwards had easily his best round, but it wasn't enough to sway the judges as the fight resulted in a unanimous decision victory for Johnny Eblen. 
Edwards likely earned between $100,000 and $200,000 guaranteed, as is standard for Bellator title challengers. And for a title fight, it's not out of the question that he could earn as high as $150,000 in sponsorship pay. It doesn't hurt being the brother of a former UFC champion. That takes his estimate to between $150,000 and $350,000, or an average of $250,000. And the winner, Johnny Eblen, stated in an interview with Sports Illustrated that he makes over a million dollars for two fights in Bellator. While his disclosed purse at Bellator 292 in February of last year was just $150,000, we know that disclosed purses don't always tell the whole story. And his new contract could have pushed him closer to two fifty, dollars or even Kayla Harrison territory at half a million dollars. Assuming between fifty dollars and $150,000 in sponsorship, he likely brought home around three hundred dollars to $650,000 to put his estimate at $475,000. However, taking him at his word, the upper end of the range could have certainly put him over a million dollars after two fights. The co-main event had likely the fastest start of any on the main card up to that point, as Bellator women's featherweight champion Chris Cyborg and last year's PFL tournament winner Larissa Pacheco threw down in the opening round. In one of the highlights of the fight, Pacheco was seemingly unfazed by a massive head kick from Cyborg. After a few rounds, while it seemed like Cyborg was ahead on the scorecards, she wore far more damage, including a cut over each eye. Pacheco started gaining momentum towards the middle of the fight, but Cyborg finished strong and took the unanimous decision decision win. While I couldn't track down a standard rate for PFL tournament champions, if it's similar to Bellator title fights, then like Fabian Edwards, Pacheco would have taken home $100,000 to $200,000 guaranteed. Along with a similar range for sponsorship opportunities, puts her in the range of $150,000 to $350,000, or $250,000 on the night. And for the women's PFL Super Fights featherweight champion Chris Cyborg, we actually have a pretty good idea what she makes from her last fight at Bellator 300, where she made $300,000 guaranteed. That along with her sponsorship pay, means she took home between $350,000 and $500,000, for an average of $425,000. If you're enjoying the content and want to keep up with all the latest videos, take a moment to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Only 7% of the people watching this video are subscribers, but you can change that and help to grow the channel in the process. And finally, the main event of the evening, Francis Ngannou returned to MMA competition after a two and a half year layoff against the PFL heavyweight tournament winner, Hainan Fajeda. The bout itself was resolved in short order as Ngannou took the fight to the ground and pummeled Fajeda's head into the canvas, knocking him out cold just three and a half minutes into the very first round, delivering Francis Ngannou the knockout victory. Now you might have noticed that up to this point, I haven't mentioned pay-per-view revenue in any of the calculations. When the PFL Super Fights League was first announced last year, there was a lot of talk about the 50% pay-per-view revenue share with the fighters. Traditionally, PFL shares the revenue with their broadcast partner, which in the US is currently ESPN. It's unclear whether the fighters would get 50% of the total pay-per-view revenue, or just PFL's cut, or 50% after expenses. And based on the financials that I'm aware of, there's a good chance that the revenues were not even enough to cover the expenses. In other words, the event lost money. Regardless, it is clear in Nganu's contract, which I'll dig deeper into in a minute, that there's a threshold before the pay-per-view revenue even kicks in for the fighters. That number is understood to be around three to four hundred thousand buys, so even if the event was profitable, I find it hard to believe that it's sold enough for pay-per-view to kick in. If I'm wrong about any of this, the financials for the fighters could change significantly. However, I'm going under those assumptions. That said, Nganu did negotiate a clause in his contract that guarantees his opponents a minimum purse. According to MMAfighting.com, that minimum is $2 million. And while he isn't a household name, on this massive stage, Fajeda also likely brought in between fifty dollars and one hundred fifty thousand dollars in sponsorship, putting his total around $2.1 million, and by far the biggest paycheck of his career. And as for the PFL Super Fights heavyweight champion Francis the Predator Ngannou, I've got to give all the credit to Mr. John Nash of the Hey Not The Face podcast for giving us real insight into what Ngannou's making on his PFL contract. I'll add links to his YouTube channel and Substack in the description. Check him out if you want a much more detailed breakdown of the contract and insight into the business side of MMA. According to a Harvard study around Francis's free agency negotiations, yes, you heard that right, the PFL offered him a quote, high seven-figure guarantee purse, an amount understood by Nash to be a whopping $8 million. Also included in his contract is another $1 million bonus should the gate exceed a certain number. With this fight taking place in Saudi Arabia, the site fee is sure to cross whatever threshold needed for this to come into effect. 
Finally, any speculation on what Nganu could earn from sponsorship deals would be just that, speculation. For the sake of the estimate, I'll say he earned between 150 and 250,000. Assuming no back-end pay from pay-per-view sales, this takes his grand total to an estimated $9,200,000. That's all for this episode. Let me know in the comments if you bought the pay-per-view for this PFL event. Any corrections to the numbers I've shown will be listed in a pinned comment below. As always, thanks for watching. See you next week for UFC 308, Tapuria vs. Holloway.